Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in today's video, I want to answer a question that's come up a couple of times the last few years. How to set dashes for zero quantities inside of a parts list table. So in my case, I'm using an I assembly, which has three different sets of values. And you can see that people want to uh, display any zero quantity as a dash to avoid any type of confusion. So um, you could right click inside the table and manually edit it, but I found some iLogic code um, working through it on the forums that I think would be really useful for this case. So let me reset it to its base condition. This is what the table would originally look like. And if I jump in here and edit the parts list table, you can see that these are reading directly from the table. So there are the calculated values, but one of the values at least has been manually overridden. Maybe we lose these, they fall into a, a grate, whatever. So we wanna add a couple extra. We can totally override the quantity. So if we have overridden the quantity, I don't want those to get zeroed out. So we kind of just leave it alone and hit okay. All right, so a couple ways that I've tackled this. One is specific to the quantity columns themselves. Another one can handle any column that has quantity in it. So I'm gonna basically take a look at the quantity specific columns in the bill of materials. So what we're gonna start with is basically just working through the entire design, the entire sheet. I'm going to create some variables to help us understand the parts list and how to work through those. Those are just everyday kind of things. These four here, though, we're going to create lists because we're going to cycle through the parts list and we want to identify all of the quantity columns in the design. And when we come across one, we want to add it to our list so that we can evaluate that list per row. So if we look down here, you can see that per column, there's a property type. So as I cycle through each column in the parts list, I look at the property type of the column and I see if it's a quantity, base, item, or unit quantity column type. And then I add it to the corresponding list. So this is how we gather everything together. And then We'll come through and look at every single row in the parts list. And then we want to take a look at every single quantity column that exists. So if there is zero quantity columns, well, we won't look for those, right? If there's zero base quantity columns, we won't look for those either. But if they are more than zero inside that list, then we're going to check every single <coughs> column in that list for every row of the parts list. And to do that, I'm using a sub function, which is, as many of you know, I'm not a programmer. So this was definitely pushing my limits a bit, but we're gonna check each cell inside that column and row to make sure that it, it is set to zero. So that's what we're doing in here. So here's the subroutine. So basically what I'm looking is checking each cell inside those lists and if it's false meaning the static is false that means it's an actual live look at what's going on in the assembly and if that value is zero then i want to put a dash in but what about that cell where i typed in the number four well <clears throat> that is static so what i want to do is i want to capture that value temporarily I'm going to set its value back to not being static. That means it's live looking at the assembly again. And if the underlying value is zero, then I'm gonna put the dash in. But if it's not zero, then I'm assuming that whoever put that number in knew what they were doing, and I'm just going to replace that value back into the cell. So that's the idea. And we would run that subroutine for each of those column types, quantity, base, item, and unit quantity column counts. So let's take a look at it. So when we run the code, you'll see it does set every single item that was zero to the dash. And this number four remains. Now it temporarily toggled. You may have noticed it flickered for a second, 
but then it replaced the value because that was the overridden number. So that's how it works. Now there's a second way to do this. It's almost exactly the same, so there's not a huge difference in the code. But instead of looking specifically for um, the BOM property columns, all I'm looking for here is inside the column it has a name, right? The item quantity, for example, you can see over here at the right. Well, if that title contains QTY, case is not sensitive, then I'm going to run that same set of logic that I had in the subroutine from the rule before. So this is useful because you may create a custom column that you're using as a quantity. So for example, let's say we have shipped quantity. So I may need 10 in the overall design, but I'm going to be shipping four of them. Well, there could be some rows where I don't ship any, so that would be a zero. This should pick up even that custom column as long as you add the characters Q, T, and Y. So same real idea here, we run the rule. Again, you'll see all the zero quantities get replaced with dashes and the four gets left alone. So a couple different ways to approach it depending on what specific goal you might have or if you've got some custom columns that you'd like to capture as well. Uh, a lot of iLogic today, but I still hope you found that useful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments and have a blessed day.